the Bill and Scott Cubicle Show with Billy the Kid and Scott Tang. Cubicle Show. Cubicle Show. Cubicle Show. Cubicle Show. It's the Bill and Scott Cubicle Show. Yeah. It's the Bill and Scott Cubicle Show. Yeah. Okay, here we are. I'm Scott. I'm Bill. And this is. The, the Bill, Bill Scott, Scott Cubicle Show. Show. Epi number 146. Can, can we introduce, what did you call the the feel in this scale? Oh, yeah. Because, um, you know what? Oh, my level of I'm feeling this is at about a five right yeah, now. Yeah, no, I was having the same problem this morning. Um, All morning. Hang on. I got to do the mom thing here and clean. There we go. Clean the lens up Thank a little you, bit. Thank you, mom. I feel like I, had to, I should just do that before we start every day. Yeah, you should. But I do think it's endearing. You know, it shows the real side of life. Um, yeah. My eyes were tired all morning, and my feeling the scale was on about probably about a five. But you know what? I decided what I was gonna do when we started the show. I was gonna freaking head bang, and you know He's what? I really, live his best it life. It gets the blood here. flowing. Let me tell you, I'm actually feeling my feeling the scale just jumped up by about like two points. So, uh, what up, Stanley? <laughs> you, you, I did, I know, I know, Kyle, but yeah, we're yeah, just yeah. Stanley, Stanley, Stan, Stanny. All right, Stanley, man. <sighs> He's uh, he's getting old. He is getting old. Can you picture a world without Stan Lee? Stan Lee is the creator Marvel of Marvel, movies. if you don't know who Stan Lee is. He also comments on our uh, post here, which you're welcome to comment to because we'll uh, read along with him as we get going. So we got some wokeness with The weekend and Drake to come. Uh, remember that hot felon? That guy that Jeremy Meeks? <laughs> he, uh... He had the major come up of maybe the past decade. DMX, uh, man, never looking good for him. It's a um, major come down. L- uh, Roseanne ratings, did they live up? Did the reboot live to the expectations? We'll get into that right after this, though, because this is like a few days old. But uh, Lil Wayne and Birdman, dude, for the second time in like a week, they were spotted together again, hanging out at the nightclub. So does this mean... Lil Wayne is getting closer to getting that money that's owed to him from Birdman. It's like fifty-one million dollars. Well, what I want to do is point out something that you mentioned to me the other day about how Lil Wayne always calls Birdman his daddy, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so that I think that means maybe he's not closer to getting his fifty-one million dollars, but maybe he's closer to getting his food chewed up and spit into his mouth by Birdman. Blah, blah. Like a bird, get it? <laughs> That's how birds <laughs> eat when they're, when they're babies. <laughs> okay, sorry. And, and if that's the case, right, if they are getting closer to getting his money back and him getting closer to being fed the way a baby bird should be fed, are we that much closer? Okay, is the world getting back on track? Because all will be right in the world when Lil Wayne is calling Birdman daddy. So we – wait. Oh, I see where this is going. You mean the circus is coming back to town because we're dragging. Wait, did I steal your joke? Go, 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 we're go. We're dragging the clowns back out of the stratosphere and putting them back where they belong inside the three rings. That many rings. That wasn't how I was going to connect it. Oh. I was going to the circus okay. and all that anyways, but you wrapped it up Dude, just differently no, than how go I... for the circus. No, no, it's fine because you basically said what I was going to say just a little differently. So okay, that's perfectly I'm sorry. Fine. I didn't even... You, no. When you said that, it was like a mind link no, I wanted... Listen, I w- I'm here just to spark the conversation. <laughs> listen, I'm not going to be the one that's going to change it, but I will spark the conversation that causes the change. That's And that's... Dialogue is important. En- engage the Dylan definitely is a you great rapper. With. Oh, you said dialogue. dialogue. Okay. Dylan, Dylan, Dylan. Learn. Oh, my feeling this level went up to a six. Learn, learn from your opposition, not just so that you can defeat them, but so that you can understand them. Because only by understanding can we truly defeat hate. Wow. Wasn't that good? That was great. That's pretty some wow. Dalai Lama stuff right there. Dolly Bill. <laughs> Billy Llama. <laughs> Billy Llama. Oh, that's hard. Yo, there's my new AKA. Llama, All Llama, right, Llama. Here we go. Llama. Uh, Billy Llama. Okay, Roseanne. <laughs> the reboot happened. How do we go from a five on the feeling list to we're, we're heading towards an on one episode here, I feel like. <laughs> I went right. up to a six. All right. I went up to a seven after wow. I. Because you, you didn't headbang yet. I so don't once like you do that. All right, that's fine. Okay. Um, 
Okay, so Roseanne. <laughs> a lot of people have been talking about this reboot of Roseanne, and particularly the question of they killed off John Goodman in the series finale, so how are they going to bring him back? Well, I won't spoil it. It did air on Tuesday, but what I will spoil is the ratings. Holy cow! All right, so this was uh, the premiere was the highest rated sitcom uh, broadcast on any network no. in nearly four years. Wow. The last time anything was this big was an episode of The Big Bang Theory in 2014. 18.2 million viewers Damn. for the premiere of the reboot of Roseanne. That is 2 million more than the series finale of Roseanne in 1997, which was about 16 million. Wow. And do you know, that's almost, know. almost double the number of viewers for the premiere of the reboot of American Idol. They had 10 million. Don't you talk bad about my American Idol. I'm not talking bad. It's just the stats, just the facts. My favorite show of all, all right. time. I think what we can learn from this is that they're both on ABC, by the way, uh, is that if you're going to reboot a show, wait at least 20 years, not just yeah. one. That's the lesson to take away. Yeah, well, American Idol, they took it away for one year, and it, like then they brought it back. That was just too quick. Nobody even... Right, there wasn't enough time cared. for people to really yeah. care about it being gone. But obviously, people cared about Roseanne. They right? do. And I think that they've, uh, they have did something I don't think people were expecting in the show of her political affiliation. I don't want to spoil it for the people that haven't seen it. But uh, there is something in there that got a lot of people talking because they weren't expecting her maybe to necessarily go that way. I heard I'm about that. I didn't want. Did you watch it? I don't because I'd never watched Roseanne okay. to start off with. But right? I had read about this. Yeah. So uh, another interesting thing about it though is the 18.2 million viewers. That's a lot of like, people. Man. That's that's like watching the show as it airs, and almost nobody does that in this day really. and age. Right. No, you sure that's not also DVR numbers? Yeah. So yeah, that's not that, two-day and five-day numbers? No, that's numbers? on Tuesday night. Wait, oh, that was only... Wow, so there's going to be five-day numbers that are going to... That's going to be yeah. over 20 million. That's, it's big. It's a big wow. deal. Wow. I well, didn't like, think people would care about Roseanne so much. Is next week, does it drop down to 10 million? Uh, it could. I mean, you know... But is that a success, though, if it drops down? Yeah, half? yeah. I mean, that's still that's still the same number that American Idol had in its premiere, and they dropped from that. So Well, if you were to release an album and you were to sell 100 thousand copies your first week then your second week was 30,000 that would that would not be very good so if she, 70% drop so if she drops a huge number if she goes down to under 10 million is that bad I don't know because I don't know how if you look at if you gauge this stuff in terms of percentage drops or in terms but of still, just raw numbers but even if they did have 7 million people viewing it that's still more than most television shows yeah, in general that's what I'm saying it's so an it's, event it's a pop culture phenomenon wow. is what it seems like Rosie is back man it's Too like bad. a wrinkle in time. A wrinkle in time. <laughs> DMX, man. His time has been Ooh. set at a year. Ooh. Because this he guy. was just sentenced to a year in jail, uh, two years post super, three years post supervision for tax evasion. And on top of all that, right, he still is going to have to pay like $2.2 million. Listen, when you don't pay your taxes, the IRS will get you. They may not get you that year. They're going to sneak up on you four or five years later when you forgot about it. And they're going to be like, hey, you remember when you didn't pay us all this money? Well, we want our money, damn it. And if you don't have their money, they're going to throw you in jail. And then they're still going to be like, pay us anyways. You know what they say when they don't, you don't have their money? What do they say? They say, fuck my dear. I don't give a damn. Wow, that is the And they truth toss right you in jail. And then you know what happens if you're DMX? Your lawyer, during the sentencing, this actually happened. He played the music video to DMX's 2009 song, Slippin', to demonstrate how hard his life had become. Ugh, what? This is just... This is a really, to me, that strikes me as a really unprofessional move. Yeah. To be a lawyer, like, hey, you're at the sentencing, right? So that you're already convicted. Obviously, in a case like this, it's just the numbers, and the numbers don't lie, right? Um, so I don't know how much a lawyer can really do in this in this scenario other than maybe, like... Reduce the time. Reduce, yeah, exactly. Um, but then you're, you're at the sentencing, and you're playing a song, trying to make people feel bad for him. First of all... He's playing a music video that's got 38 million views on YouTube. So it's not like, oh, look at this. His times are so hard. He's only got 500 views on YouTube. Look how far he's fallen. You know, 38 million views, that generates a decent amount of ad revenue. Plus, he's got 15 kids, bro. You know, or, yeah, you're right. You're actually right. <laughs> like, that's um, not a lie. Like, no. 15. Is it 15? I thought it was 13. But 
It's it's it's, it's at least thirteen. It's either or, it's yeah. same thing at this point in time. Plus, when you owe two point three million dollars in taxes, do you know how much money you had to have made to owe that much money? We're talking billions. Not billions. Not not billions, but a lot of money. Millions. Millions. Yeah, a decent. A, it's a lot of money. Okay, so pay your taxes. If you're, this is like. The Cardi B scenario. See, Cardi B, this is why she's on top right now, because she's on top of her money. Well, you might, oh, you might need is, yeah. look at this relic. Figure it out. It's a calculator. Our equation. Is it signed on the back? Oh, it's autographed. It goes to billions. Look at that. Does it really? <laughs> wow, it has the computing power to go to billions. But yeah, Cardi B, she's on top of the game. She paid her taxes. She's not going to jail. She's going out to make more money. That's facts right there. You could learn from the the youngster, the the young up and comer there, Mister X. <laughs> I saw a tweet that was like, "Stop, drop, should have called H&R Block." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. All right. All right. So you remember that uh, felon, that the hot felon he was labeled, Jeremy Meeks. I do. I thought that was the dumbest thing. He was. Uh, he had a good jail picture, and yep. all the ladies Mugshot. were swooning over it. And, well, anyways, he went, he became a model. He had a great uh, post, he's had a great post-jail life, right? Yeah. Right? He's, he is now a professional model, so that things are working out for but him. But some may argue he just caught the come up of the century, though. Uh, at least of the century, now we're only like 18 years into yeah. it, so it's not like it's, of we're the, talking all Of these the years, last but, 500 years, yeah. the last five centuries. But, so he just, uh, he's been dating a billionaire, and now she's pregnant. With his child. <laughs> That's it. That's it. game That's over. That's he it. Reverse gold dig. Right. So it's like if I'm, if correct me if I'm wrong, but like when you do child support, whoever has more money has to pay the yeah. other person, right? And then if he lives wow. this glorious lifestyle wow. with her, she's still gonna. He's, he's if set. they split up, she's gonna have to he's give set. him a lot of money. Can you imagine? Even this guy he... committed a crime. He committed a crime. He got arrested because he was good looking. He got a modeling career, dated a billionaire, and now Bro. he put a baby inside her, and he is set for life. That's, that's the American dream right there. Yo, it's all you built a career on crime. Congrats, you're a supervillain. It's a part of... God's plan. <laughs> God's plan. Yeah, man, it's all part of it, man. Like, it uh. all connects. You know, never forget about it. <laughs> all right, I just had to hit that future drop because I didn't know if I was going to be able to play that all, so I just wanted to play it. <laughs> um, before we get into these album releases... Uh, and close out the show and close out the show for the week. We do got to touch on the weekend here. Now, I'm going to let you bring up what you want, and I'm going to piggyback off of what you say, and I'm going to connect this all together for this glorious wokeness that I got. Okay. Now, there's a rumor that the weekend is going to be dropping a surprise album tomorrow. And if you take a look at our sheet, real quick, screenshot that so you can look at it. Uh, <laughs> Because I don't feel like holding it up the whole time. You'll notice that there is no, the weekend is not on this list of upcoming albums. But there was a leaked screenshot from his phone, a text message from him to a contact known only as Lamar. And it said, Should we drop Friday? I'm indifferent, to be honest. Now, that makes me a little suspicious because who's going to be indifferent about when they drop their album? That's the kind of thing you put some thought into. But. I question, got a reason why he might be indifferent, but maybe why he's not indifferent. Okay. Well, the question is, how do we even know that this screenshot came from the right. weekend's phone? How do you right? know that I didn't just text Bill and we just put it in Photoshop right. and changed some stuff up? Because it was posted on the weekend's official Instagram oh, account. Okay. He posted it himself. And he so didn't it really wasn't me leaked. In the post. No, he did not. Uh, it wasn't leaked. He just posted a screenshot from his own phone as basically like a not-so-subtle hint that we're probably going to get an album tomorrow, unless he truly is indifferent and they decide to do it some other time. All right, well, I do think that there is a chance that we do get a weekend album. i also been saying for a couple weeks now that there's a good chance there's going to be a surprise Drake album on the 30th. Because God's plan would be for Drake to release an album You're on right. Good Friday. You have been saying that. All right, I've been saying this for at least a month now. But what if God's plan, God's plan. really God's plan. is the weekend and Drake are going to put out a collab album tomorrow? That OVO, that XO, yo, that life is going to come at you tomorrow. Because if the weekend's teasing this, and then it's all set up with God's plan for Good Friday, man. What are they? And, and we got and and it's like a uh, Passover and Easter in the same like week right now. It's like. 
Dude, come on. It's all lining up. The, the universe is aligned right now. Hallelujah. Let's go deeper. Break all it right. down. What if since it's Easter weekend? Passover too. Right. Uh, right, isn't it Passover? I believe they all, always fall on the same I weekend. I don't think they do. Maybe not. I'm pretty sure they I don't actually know. I don't know that much about uh, Jewish no. custom, tradition, culture. But, I know a little bit, and I'm pretty sure they don't. But what I will say is, what are they? if they make a collab album together, yep. do they call it for Easter? They call it Watch the Tomb. Oh. <laughs> now, think about this. We're going to go farther, right? We got Drake, who's going to go down a G-O-D, or as G-O-D, depending on which point in the song yeah. you're listening to. Is he saying that he's, over Easter weekend, gonna rise again like Jesus? Is is this Drake referring to himself, saying, yes, I'm back, and I am God, because it's Easter, and here I am. And the weekend is saying that it's coming out on the weekend. Easter's on Sunday. Passover is this weekend. You got all that going on. You're saying, is it the reemergence, the rising of Drake to go back to the Take Care days where the weekend and Drizzy Drake worked on the entire album together? And some people even say that most of the songs were the weekend songs originally, and then they were given to Drake, and that's what created Take Care. And everybody's saying Drake is Take Care Drake again. Oh, um, G. So we. Ugh. We finally learned who the real G-O-D is, and it's the W-E-E-K-N-D? Oh, Is that what you're my saying? Dude. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I need to go to sleep. I'm so woke. Think about this, too. Also, another thing. This is not really a wokeness moment. This is just statistical. Last year, remember what happened over Easter weekend last year? No. Kendrick Lamar released his album, Damn. And that was had the biggest first week sales numbers of the year until Reputation came out. But still, it was a big weekend for Kendrick, a big weekend for music in 2017. And this could be a similarly big weekend, especially if the two holy entities of the game put out Watch the Tomb. And all I can say about that is, damn. <laughs> All right, so with that being said, that's it for this week's edition of The Cubicle Show. Oh, yeah, let's go run through it. So, En Vogue uh, has an album tomorrow. Dead Mouse has an album tomorrow. Yes, I mean, there's not a MF lot. MF Doom. Um, I actually looked at the list and earlier, and I was like, man, there isn't even an album that, like, I think is a funny title in artist. Ashley week. McBride, Girl Going Nowhere. Ben Harper, No Mercy in This Land. That's facts. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That's fa F-A-X. Facts. Okay. Bill. Yes. Scott. Mm -hmm. That's it for the cubicle show, people. So I hate to break it to you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, April Fools. <laughs> April Fools early. <laughs> wow, you did it. You hoodwinked me. You pulled a fast one. Got him. Okay, with that being said, we'll be back. You can catch us Monday through Thursday on the Jams Facebook page at 1030 Eastern Time. Actually, there are other time zones that matter now. April Fools! That's the only time zone that matters! Uh one cubicle show cubicle show cubicle show cubicle show that's what i'm talking about boy bill and scott cubicle show yeah bill and scott cubicle show yeah bill and scott bill and scott cubicle show it's the bill and scott bill and scott cubicle show it's the bill and scott bill and scott cubicle show it's the bill and scott bill and scott cubicle show cubicle show cubicle show Cubicle show. Cubicle show. Not a rectangle show. Not a triangle show. Not a pyramid show. It's a cubicle show. Bill and Scott cubicle show. Yeah. Bill and Scott cubicle show. Yeah. Cubicle show. <laughs> <laughs> we just got one. Boy.